Hey everyone, this is Unlock24, and uh, today we're going to be taking a look at, well, let me close out of this, this uh, new mini box that they're about to uh, release. It's uh, Resonance of Contrast, and I just thought, uh, I was looking at the primary card and see, but I haven't take, uh, I haven't looked at everything else. I did see that, uh, I think Snipe Hunter was on here, but basically nothing else. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what, uh, what we're going to get. Uh, so we're going to get Red Eye Slash Dragon, Buchan Jamato, uh, Phalanx Spike, defense draw <clears throat> let's go ahead and go into the list so we can go ahead and talk about it in, in, in details so for the ultra rare we're gonna go ahead and get snipe hunters snipe hunters uh, is actually gonna be a really good card and whenever uh mystic tomato gets released this card is gonna be amazing uh if you don't know what it does is you can discard one card then target one card on the field roll a six-sided die and destroy that target unless you roll a one or a six uh, this card saw a ton of uh of play in the tcg whenever it came out and it was one of the top cards to to get, I think, uh, when it came out in the, as a champion pack card, because it just it it created basically advantage out of nowhere. I gave you a free plus one by destroying a card by basically just rolling a die, and the odds are kind of high. I think it's like what is it, two out of three to destroy a card, which is really good. Uh, I'm glad that it's an ultra rare out of a mini box, so it's gonna be easy to get or easier to get than other cards in a, in a full box. So overall, this card is going to be really good, uh, and uh, hopefully, I can get a like at least two copies of it. Because if Mystic Tomato comes out, you only need a cop, uh, just a single copy or uh, or two copies, and I think that that would be it. Uh, the next ultra rare is uh, Red Eye Slash Dragon. Uh, and let me open up a uh, a new window because I can't read that small text. Uh, where is it at? I think I had a, I had it opened up here. Yeah. Alright, so what it does, Red Eyes Black Dragon and uh, Warrior Monster. When a Red Eyes Monster declares an attack, you can target one Warrior Monster in your graveyard. Equip it to this card as an equip spell with this effect. The equipped monster gains 200 attack. When a card or effect is activated that targets a card you control, quick effect, you can send one equipped card you control to the graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon as many monsters from your graveyard as possible. That were equipped to this card. All right, I guess it's a decent card and a de uh, decent fusion for uh, for Red Eyes and Warrior uh, mixed decks. I don't there's not that there's many of them. Uh, don't really think it's gonna do much, and uh, or maybe like in a dedicated deck it might do something. But other than that, I don't see it doing much of anything. Uh, the attack is kind of low for a fusion monster. It's a 28 attack. Uh, it's a decent attack for duelings, but. Uh, uh, the fact that you have to get uh, get rid of uh, an equip card, it's, I mean, you don't see that Gemini monster seeing that much play either uh, because of that requirement. So overall, it's a decent ultra rare, I guess. Uh, then uh, for the super rares, we have uh, Phalanx Pike. The equip monster gains 900 attack for each card in either graveyard that has the same name. It does. Again, it's a decent card. Not great. If, if you've been uh, following my channel, you know that I'm not uh, too big into equip cards that just increase attack because they're really they're basically useless. Uh, defense draw during your opponent's turn at damage calculation. Make the battle damage you take from this battle zero, and if you do draw a card, all right. So <clears throat> I think you're better off with a jar of greed. Maybe uh, it doesn't negate one attack, but I mean. Most of the time, if, if you're trying to negate, or maybe it might see some use in that, in like a burn deck or a stall deck, uh, maybe in a parasite deck or a, uh, a sky star raid deck. I, I think it might be decent. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll give it a try with a sky star raid. Uh, Paladin of the Cursed Dragon. Once per turn, you can target one level four or lower zombie type monster in your opponent's graveyard that was destroyed by battle. Special summon that target to your side of the field. All right, actually, this is actually a decent card. Because uh, you can go ahead and summon a zombie from uh, from your opponent's graveyard that was destroyed by battle. I don't know if it was by that specific card. No, I don't think it is. But um, it's a decent card. Uh, whenever Zombie World comes out, or I don't know, do it now. I don't think we've seen Zombie World. Uh, but whenever it does come out, or maybe it's a skill. I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, I think it's going to be a little bit better, especially when Zombie Master comes out. Also, it's going to be a decent 1900 attack beat stick. Uh, and you can search it through Pyramid Turtle as well because it has a 1200 defense. So a decent card, but uh, it's, it's, it's it's just a decent card. Uh, skill Successor, target one face up monster you control. It gains 400 attack until the end of this turn. During your turn except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard. 
You can banish this card from your graveyard and target one face up monster you control. The target gains a 800 attack until the end of this turn. <clears throat> it's basically a quick play. Uh, I guess it's a reinforcement of the army that you can use twice. Uh, again, reinforcement really wasn't that useful or that great. And I think skill successors isn't going to be as great uh, either. So, so far, this box, the only good card on it is uh, it's an Ipe Hunter and maybe Defense Draw for style deck. Skill successors that really that great. Right, Void Trap Hole. When your opponent's special summons a monster with 2,000 or more attack, negate the effect of one of those monsters with 2,000 or more attack, and if you do, destroy it. There's really not that many monsters that have, uh, have 2,000 attack other than like a tributed monster and uh, like a fusion monster, so I don't see how good this card is going to be, or there's not that many uses in Duel Links yet, but maybe uh, with future releases it could get a little bit better. Alright, Bujin Yamato, this was actually one of the key cards in the in the Bujin deck, or uh, it's basically, uh, when, well, let me read the effect and then I'll talk about it. Uh, once per turn during your end phase, you can add one Bujin monster from your deck to your hand, then send one card from your hand to the graveyard, you can only uh, control one Bujin Yamato. So basically, that this was able to, or it allowed you to search for basically everything in the deck, it is a key card for, for uh, Bujins. So if you're planning on running Bujins, you will need three copies of it at least, uh, two copies if, if, if anything. But Bujin Yamato is able to search through the entire Bujin deck, so uh, it is a must for the Bujin decks. I, I don't know what else they released on here, but we'll, we'll take a look. Dawn Knight, alright. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can send one light monster from your deck to the graveyard. If this card is sent from your deck to the graveyard, target one light monster in your graveyard, place that target on top of your deck. You can only use one Dawn Knight effect once per turn, only once that turn. Uh, it's the, basically the just one of those Knight for Light monsters, a decent deck, a decent, uh, a decent addition, I guess. All right, Paladin of Dark Dragons, Dragon Ritual. You can ritual summon this card with Dark Dragon Ritual at the start of the damage step. If this card attacks a defense position monster, destroy that monster. So it has the same effect as the as a Paladin, the regular Paladin. Uh, you can tribute this card. Special summon one red ice monster from your hand uh, or deck, except a red ice black shake. You can only use this effect of paladin of dark dragons once per turn. So basically, it's a a, a paladin for the red ice deck. I guess it's a decent card. I don't, th I don't think it's gonna see that much play. Uh, Royal command for the monster effect cannot be activated, also, their effects are negated. I don't think there's that many effect monsters being played now. Uh, Luster dragon at 1900 attack beat stick with uh, mountains is gonna be what uh, 21 it was, does mountains give it uh, 200 or 300 and anyway, this is gonna be a good uh, beat stick for dragons uh, luster dragon right, sacred uh, sacred crane if this card is special summon draw one card uh, it's a decent card uh, vampire's curse when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard you can pay 500 life points special summon it during the standby phase of the next turn when you do it gains 500 attack so uh, this is a decent card i guess uh, especially if you get it out early in the game that's going to put a ton of pressure on your opponent our rainbow veil uh, if the equip monster battles an opponent's monster while that monster is on the field its effects are negating the, the battle phase only i guess a decent negation uh, flam little pwn 200 uh, attack 200 defense when this card is destroyed by battle I'm sent to the graveyard you can add one monster with 200 defense from the deck to your hand i think that's most of the flambos are 200 so you can basically switch anything with that uh daybreaker level 4 1700 attack it's a warrior when this card is special summon you can special summon one daybreaker from your hand all right that's a that's a decent effect i guess you can go ahead and swarm your opponent with uh with monsters uh photon lead Special summon one level four lower light monster from your hand in face up attack position. I guess it's a good addition to the fairy uh, deck since or the light deck because it doesn't really have that much of a of any, anything going for it right now. Trial and tribulation. I think this was a, a secret rare when it came out. Uh, you can activate uh, one trial and tribulation per turn during the end phase of the turn. This card was activated. Apply this effect depending on the number of monsters you tributed from the field and from your hand. This turn accept tokens. For one, draw one card. Uh, two, add two monsters from your graveyard to your hand. And three, destroy up to three face up cards on the field. Alright, so I guess it could be a decent card uh, 
maybe in a monarch deck or maybe in some tribute base deck. I will see what I guess we'll be able to do with that. Uh, Bujin Regalia the Sword. Activate one of these effects. Target one Bujin monster in your graveyard. Add that target to your hand. Target one of your banished Bujin monsters. Send that target to the graveyard. Uh, it's a decent, I guess, equip. I, uh, Bujinji Boar. If you control a Bujin monster, you can banish this uh, card from your graveyard. Then target one face up attack position monster from your opponent's uh, control. Change it to face up defense position. And if you do, its defense becomes zero until the end of this turn. I guess it's a it's a decent it has a decent defense. All right, there's centipede. I think centipede uh, is played. So I, I don't know if we get the uh, the honest type uh, Bujin. If we do, this deck is gonna be I think the the next uh, best thing if they have that honest uh, like monster effect. Uh, if you control a beast warrior type Bujin monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard and target one spell or trap by your opponent controls. Destroy the target, you can only use the effect of Bujin Centipede once per turn. Alright, so this destroys back rows. Uh, Vampire Graze. When a level 5 or higher zombie type monster is spicy summon to your side of the field by the effect of zombie type monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can pay 2000 life points special summon this card from your graveyard. You can only use the effect of Vampire Graze once per turn. Once per turn, you can declare one card type. Monster Spell or Trap card your opponent sends one card of the type from their deck to the game. Alright, keeps going with a vampire theme, I guess. Mm. The Bujin Arasude. If a Bujin monster in your graveyard or face up, I can't read that. Let me go ahead and search it up out here. That's uh, super tiny. Bujin Arasude. Nah, let me see. If a Bujin monster in your graveyard or face up on your side of the field is banished, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand in face up defense position. Once per turn during your end phase, if a Bujin card was added from your deck to your hand this turn, except by drawing it while you control this face up card, you can draw one card. Then discard one card, you can only control one Bujin or so that per turn. Alright, it's a decent effect. Alright, the Wicked Warm Beast, this uh, face-up card on the field is returned to the owner's hand during the end phase. So return, uh, most of the time that's, uh, that's useless unless you have something that can go with that. If the attack uh, of an attacking monster your opponent controls is lower than the defense of the attack defense position monster you control, destroy the attacking monster at the end of the damage step. So it's basically as if you had it in the attack position. A class scorpion, uh, once per turn you can flip this card into face down defense position. When this card is attacked, an opponent's face down defense position monster. This card's attack becomes 24 and during the damage calculation. Alright, so it uh, destroys defense position monsters basically. Sand Gambler, tosses a coin three times. If all three results are heads, destroy a monster on the, uh, your opponent's side of the field. If all three results are tails, destroy a monster on your side of the field. You can only activate this effect once per turn during your main phase. I guess you have to be super lucky to destroy everything. Um, just like make Senku. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent by a direct attack, draw one card. During the end phase of the turn, this card was summoned, send it to the graveyard. Base, kinda useless. Foolish Revival. Select one monster from your opponent's graveyard and special summon it in face up defense position on your opponent's side of the field. Alright, uh, really not that useful. There might be some combos with it. Fine, discard two cards. Not sure why you would want to do that. Healing Wave Generator, Card of Sacrifice, Crash Bug Road, I don't remember what this does. Each player can spread some one monster from either uh, their hand with the same level as one face up level four lower monsters that control. Alright, that could be useful somehow, or it might tutor an OTK, I think. Uh, I'm gonna have to come back to that one and see uh, whenever it gets released, see if they has any use for it. Bujinji Warg, while wow, this card is in face up defense position, other Bujin monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. Uh, it has a decent defense, I guess. Bujinji Pavo, let's see. When a beast warrior type Bujin monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard for someone one Bujin monster from your deck. You can only use the effect of Bujin uh, Pavo once per turn. Alright, Pavo basically is a uh, turkey in Spanish. So, Bujin Turkey, I guess. It's a decent effect. Uh, it, you can replace the monster you destroyed. 
And then the Dark Dragon Ritual for the uh, the Paladin of Dark Dragons. Alright, uh, there we go. Overall, the deck, the, the cards have been released. I mean, they're not... It's not going to be a game-breaking box, I don't think. Uh, unless you're going for Bujins, and we don't have everything yet to go ahead and have Bujin be what it can be. And Bujin is actually extremely competitive. Uh, it's basically an anti-meta deck, but we don't really have uh, most of the cards out yet. So uh, eventually it'll get really good. It'll be to where I can compete with everything that's out there whenever uh, the rest of the meta or anti-meta cards come out and the rest of the, uh, the Bujin cards come out. But anyway, if you... I think the, the only card that's really, really worth it going for it if you're not going to play Bujins is the Snipe Hunter and at least to get one copy of it. I think that's uh, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to try to get a single copy of Snipe Hunter. Because um, we can't really run a counter deck or an anti-meta deck with Bujins just yet. I might come back to it after after they get released. or uh, I don't know, but we'll see whenever the mini box comes out. I might open some packs. So let me know what you guys think about this entire little mini box. Uh, it does have some red-eye support. It has the, the new Bujins. It has some uh, some, some uh, zombie support. And that's basically it. It's, it's a decent mini box. Uh, I think it could have been better, but uh, again, uh, we'll, we'll see when whenever it gets released and uh, we'll see what people do with it. And if there's a lot of people doing different things and uh, uh, maybe this uh, the, there's a defense drop might might be good in a star deck. And basically that's, that's it because Void Trap really doesn't do much of anything in Duel Links right now or I don't think it'll do much of anything. Uh, the Snipe Hunter is going to be amazing when the Tomato comes out, but until then... Uh, you might have to run three if you want to use the effect. But I think that's going to be it for today. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Uh, if you are enjoying my content, I would truly appreciate it if you guys subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.